the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of Peace, Saint Joseph, Saint Maria Goretti, Saint Raphael the Archangel, Saint John Paul II. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So the title of tonight's talk is uh, Christ-Centered Humanism. Um, it's part of a longer talk. I'll just give you the first section of it. Um, uh, what he called the long-awaited answer, okay? And I'll try to explain that to you, to, to modern subjectivism. Um, and it's an introduction, you could say, to the thought, and you could say even the pontificate of uh, Pope John Paul II, how he thought, what was his historical moment, you could say, uh, and where he fits in, 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 in church teaching. So it's a very kind of short introduction to, to, to that, okay? So you can go ahead, Helen, okay, okay. So um, as a young bishop, uh, Karel Wojtyla, who would later become John Paul, um, attended the Second Vatican Council, okay? Very important moment in the history of the church in the modern world, you, you could say. Uh, and the document on the, the church's role uh, in the modern world is called Gaudium et Spes, okay? So the Pope is the, the next, well, he's not Pope yet, he's Bishop, okay? He's at the council. Uh, he, he's picking up the, uh, the atmosphere, the teaching, uh, perhaps changes of tone as well at, 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 at the council. And one of, it, one of its, I suppose, its, its uh, emphasis uh, um, at the council was, was more or less a, a focus on, on human dignity, okay? That was being kind of uh, communicated by the bishops. And this is just a, a, a segment of, 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 of Gaudium et Spes. Today, there is a growing awareness of the sublime dignity of the human person who stands above all things and whose rights and duties are universal and inviolable. He ought, therefore to have ready access to all that is necessary for living a genuinely um, human life. So uh, that was one of the stresses of, of, the, um, of, of, of the council. The council is quite anthropological, okay? It's, it's quite focused on, on man, his dignity, his goal, his happiness, etc. Keep going. So later then in 1978, so you're talking about, what, 15... Yeah, 15 years later, when he becomes Pope, uh, he said of his first encyclical, which was, which was based on the theme, Redemptor Ominous, the Redeemer of Man, okay? He said, I was actually carrying its content within me. Um, I had only to copy from memory and experience what I had already been living on the threshold of the papacy, okay? Pope John Paul's basic insight is that man in the 20th century had forgot what it is to be a person, okay? All his themes, all his encyclicals, all his teachings focus on one word, person, okay? And he said, we have to recapitulate, we have to go back, we have to rediscover what it is to be a person uh, because we turn persons into objects. Uh, we turn persons into utility items and that's not Christian, okay? Um, so this is what he says in that encyclical in, in Redemptor Romulus. He says, man, in the full truth of his existence, of his personal being, and also of his community and social being, is the primary and fundamental way for the church. Okay, so we just can't step over our neighbor. We can't look at other countries where there is suffering and look away in, in that sense. We have to promote human dignity as a, as a, a priority. Uh, as Catholics. And if, if, if you think that's not scriptural, it is scriptural. Okay, look at, at um, is, this, is this Job? It must be, must be Job. Yeah. What is man that you make so much of him uh, that you set your heart on him? Okay, so the scriptures themselves uh, comply with, with, with that, I suppose, that human focus, that, that, that focus on, on, on human dignity. Okay, keep going. 
Okay, he, but there's a certain way, there's a certain angle, okay, there's a certain way of looking at it, a uh, certain way of coming at it, okay. Uh, in the north portal of Chartres uh, Cathedral in France, uh, there's an image of God the Father creating the first Adam, okay, so the first man. Um, but his eyes are fixed on the new Adam, <laughs> okay. Uh, so Christ, the new man, uh, the new Adam, is the exemplar uh, for the creation of every human being. Okay, so before any of us were, were, were to be, the model was already in God. Okay, and that model becomes visible, that exemplar becomes visible in, in, in Jesus incarnate. Okay, uh, and that's what the, the artist is trying to portray. Uh, where do you find your humanity? Where do you, full, where do you find full humanness? Where do you find what it is to be a man or to be a woman? You find it in Christ. Okay, uh, so, and at Vatican II, uh, it's a funny thing happened at Vatican II, okay, the, the focus on anthropology, on, on the human being, on human persons, uh, kind of merged with what we call Christology, which is the, the study of Christ, okay, and they came together in a very, well, interesting, uh, original way, okay, so it's the emergence of what we can call a Christ-centered humanism, okay, okay, keep going. Okay, and this is the, the key teaching, again, in Gaudium et Spes at the Council, and one that Pope John Paul II will come back to again and repeat again and again and again. Okay, he says, in fact, um, and this is, the, this is the long way to answer, he says, okay, in fact, it is only in the mystery of the Word incarnate that light is shed on the mystery of man. For Adam, the first man, was a figure of the future man, uh, namely Christ the Lord. It is Christ, the last Adam, who fully reveals man to himself and unfolds his noble calling by revealing the mystery of the Father and the Father's love. Okay, so Christ does two things. He, he reveals us to ourselves, to ourselves, okay? He, he reveals me to me, <laughs> okay? <laughs> he teaches me who I am. He teaches me my true identity, how I am to be as a man or, or as a woman, um, how I am to fulfill my life, what is his plan for my life, okay? Looking to Christ, I see myself, okay? Looking at Christ, I'm actually, I, it, it kind of brings the focus back on who I am, okay? My, my true being, my, my true identity, okay? Uh, and also the second thing that Christ does, he also reveals the Father to us. Okay, my father and I go on working, you know. Father, you always hear my prayer. 77 times in the, in the Gospels, he talks about God as his father, okay. My father and your father, okay. So he reveals, reveals God to us, okay. He's bringing us into that uh, triune life, okay. Does that make sense? Okay, so the, the thing is, okay, with lots of humanisms um, out there and lots of, say, sometimes ideologies to, to, to probe into, um, they, they, don't, they don't tell us about our full humanity. What the Pope is saying and what the Church is saying is that only Christ can give us that full measure. Uh, only Christ can bring us to ourselves. Another option would become self-absorbed, to become totally introspective. But actually, you lose yourself <laughs> in total introspection. In total self-absorption, you lose yourself. You do not find yourself, okay? It's only reaching out to Christ, the new man, that we find out who we are, because he's our origin and he's our end in that sense as well. And he's our, he's our now as well, you could say, okay? Okay, okay. so what, what about his teaching? He says, the words of Christ speak with a lofty eloquence because he knows what is in man, John's gospel, and has, in a certain way, united himself with each human being in the mystery of the Incarnation. So, Christ has taken on our experience. Uh, he has taken on our humanity, okay? He worked with human hands, okay? The carpenter's son, as was thought. Uh, he thought with a human mind. He has a human intellect, like us. Uh, he acted with a human will. And with a human heart, he loved, okay? He had, he had the affections, uh, the range of emotions of a human heart, okay, uh, for, for loving as well. So his words, more than any figure in history, okay, he's the center of history. He's the unique pole of history, you could say. 
Uh, his words penetrate in a unique, unrepeatable way into the mystery of man, in a generic sense, man and woman, okay, all of humanity, man, and enter his heart. Okay, so um, if we want to discover who we are, uh, we have to go to Christ, okay? Keep going. Okay, so um, the Pope goes on in, in his first encyclical, he says, the man who wishes to understand himself thoroughly, and not just in accord with immediate, partial, and often superficial and even illusory standards, okay? They're the ones we can go for very quickly, <laughs> okay? They're all the kind of the things you can, you, can, you can tap into today, okay? And measures of his being. He must, with his unrest and uncertainty, draw near to Christ. He must, so to speak, enter into him with his, all his own self. He must appropriate and assimilate the whole of the reality of the incarnation and redemption in order to find himself. Okay, so just a few things of that, okay. There are other ways of looking for yourself, okay. Um, it may be down some channel, <laughs> you know. Uh, it may be in things, it may be in kind of relationships that are not very deep. Uh, it can be in stardom, it can be in celebrity-dom. Uh, it, it, it can be the different ways you might look for yourself, okay, <laughs> here. Uh, but the, the Pope, we repeat that, he says, be careful of partial standards. Uh, be, be, car be, be careful of very partial undertakings uh, that may bring out one aspect of your being, maybe one talent you have, uh, but may, we, may neglect the rest, okay? Uh, and sometimes illusory, things that deceive you as well, okay? Uh, the way to find oneself um, is actually with the gift of one's own self, the whole of oneself, okay? When all those facets of your being all those different corporate aspects of who you are are brought together. Give them to Christ, okay? And in this way, you will find who you are, what you're for, where you're going, okay? So it's, it's Christ-centered. It's looking at Christ that we, we, we find ourselves again. Does that make sense? Okay, so it's a different way of looking at the, the human being and anthropology and humanism, okay? Because there are humanisms which can forget, it can be secular humanism, uh, which um, I'm sure has some good things, but you know it, it tends to take God out of the uh, the, uh, the equation. It tends to be very horizontal. Uh, it's um, it's um, I, I'll give you an example. One time I was I was home and I just started training. Uh, uh, maybe my first days uh, years as a Dominican. I went out with my friends. Uh, it was around Christmas time. I met a girl. I was talking to her for a long time, and she had a philosophy. It was interesting. She says you make your own happiness. You know, you work on it, and you kind of work hard. And she's very good with a good, good kind of, kind of debate about it. And because um, she knew that I was, I suppose she was taught a seminarian at that stage, you know. And I wasn't being cheeky. Um, I asked her at the end. Then I said, well, "Are you happy?" <laughs> you know, I know it's not really cheeky, you know. But she said no. Okay, it was funny, kind of, kind of. Uh, she said no. She said, "I, I, I will, I will, I will. Ne I, I don't think I'll ever have any confidence." As a person, I don't think I'll ever have any confidence. I said, that's interesting because confidence comes from con, which means with fide, it means with faith. Interesting, isn't it? To have confidence means to be with faith. Okay, so just kind of, we left it more, more or less at that. But it was interesting, you can have a philosophy, you can build up a philosophy around yourself and in community with others, but it may not bring you anywhere near where you want to go, okay? And the Pope is saying, only Christ can do that in, in the mystery of his incarnation, okay? In the mystery of his becoming flesh, okay? Uh, okay, just one more slide then. I'll just say, in, where, where does that tie into pure in heart? Um, uh, when Christ reveals man to himself, he, he, he also reveals the full picture of humanity, okay? Especially the beginning, okay? Uh, Christ himself received human nature, our nature without sin, in the purity that it possessed in the state of innocence, okay? But then, where does Christ point us to where we understand man and woman, uh, where we understand human sexuality, marriage, gift, union, all those things? He's, he brings us back to the beginning, okay? He, he brings us back to the creation uh, of man and woman, the differentiation of the sexes, okay? The equality of the sexes, uh, their communion, their friendship, 
uh, their image in God, okay? Have you not read that he who made them from the beginning made them male and female and said, for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one, okay? So if we want to discover uh, the fullness of our humanity, uh, who were we are to be as male and female, uh, we actually find ourselves looking at the words of Christ, <laughs> okay? It's not, a, it's not a project or an interesting discovery we've made ourselves, okay? It's actually scriptural based, okay? And that's where we begin our kind of work with TOB, Theology of the Body, uh, John Paul II. It starts with the words of Christ, okay? And we go back to then later in his, um, his uh, pontificate, well, quite soon, he, he will start teaching the theology of the body about the dignity of man and woman. Uh, the dignity of, 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 of conjugal relationships, uh, the dignity of marriage, whatever, okay? But it, it, it's Christ-centered at the same time, okay? Okay, that's it. Um, so any questions or any thoughts on that? Um, <coughs> comments? <laughs> I was just scratching my head. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose then when you're saying about that um, girl you were talking to, that's yeah. you saying, um, you know, like you create your own happiness. Yeah. She obviously bought them happy, so I suppose that just kind of shows then maybe when you have your own plan for happiness, yeah. you might think, you know, if your whole life planned ahead of you, you might think yeah. one thing or a few things might bring you happiness. Yeah. But then if you if you're not open to God's plan yeah. for you for happiness, then you can land into like a deep unhappiness. So yeah. That kind of um, yeah. diversion between your own plan and God's plan yeah. for you. Yeah. And I mean she's a very nice girl and you know, just that that's what came out of the conversation, but um um, yeah, I think that's true, yeah, yeah, or whatever. Robert, yeah, go ahead. You referenced secular humanism as what this was the response to. Yeah. Could you give the definition of that? Kind of what secular humanism? Um, it, it, it's the city without God. <laughs> okay. Uh, it, it, uh, it, it's, it's the city without interiority. Okay, Cardinal Sarah says that uh, one of the things that happens in, in contemporary culture is that uh, your interior life gets exhausted. It gets taken out, okay? Because there's so many exterior attractions, there's so much to do, okay? Uh, but your, your, your spiritual life is not allowed to develop, okay? Which means for, for a Christian and for a Catholic that you're not allowed to develop in your friendship with Christ, okay? Uh, and, and basically... I don't mean this in the wrong way. It's basically because there's so much noise. <laughs> okay? Like when you get up in the morning, like you could have the radio on. Okay? You have the radio on in the car going to work. You get into work and they've got a radio on. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. You come to lunchtime and you're listening to lovely beat songs, you know, somewhere, you know, uh, at your lunch, okay? And you go back to work and you get home at night. You're tired. You naturally want to recreate. You turn on um, Nationwide or something like that, you know, and... <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, and then you have to do your kind of little what should I say the your your social media then for a little while as well, you know. And then by the time you get to bed, you haven't had a moment's silence all day. Do you understand? Yeah. yeah. So it can be like that. It can you can get caught up in a, in a way that do, doesn't develop you authentically. And I think that's one of the secrets of secularism. Uh, it keeps us going on a very horizontal plane. And it, it keeps us out of our own depths, you know? It's why St. Kevin went to Glen de Locke. He went for silence, he went for solitude, he wanted to know God, you know? That's what the, 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 the Catholic, or the Irish saints have done, and what saints have done all over the world. They went looking for God. St. Benedict, he just left the culture, because uh, he couldn't find God, you know? Uh, but, um, the answer to seculars is finding God, okay? Not a vague or sentimental or abstract spirituality, but a really concrete one, you know? 
I don't know if that's an answer, but it's, you know, it's part of it. Go ahead. Um, how can you find God in, like, silence and everything without becoming self-absorbed? Okay, I'll go over there. One second, yeah. Okay. If, you, yeah. if you decide to um, cut yourself from the society, yeah. how do you do that without becoming self-absorbed? That's a good question. Okay, I'll go back over here now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the question is, if you, how, how do you, how do you find God without becoming self-absorbed, okay? Because if you cut yourself off from society and things like that, okay? Uh, and actually, that's not, not what I'm advocating, okay? Um, it, it, it has to be an authentic spirituality, okay? Uh, an authentic Catholic or Christian spirituality is always in communion with others, okay? It's always concerned about others, you know. Even Thomas Merton talked about the monks in his, in his monastery, that they were, lovely description, he said, um, they were crazy with caring for the human condition, okay? When, when we find Christ, he may, he may pull us off into the desert, you know, and, and we, could be, we could spend years in the desert, it could be in a monastery, uh, it could be an enclosed order in, in, in prayer, but Christ will never take us from others, Okay? Um, another little phrase that I, I learned, which I can, is the man, the man whose eyes are fixed on himself gives no light. Okay, sometimes um, certain se secular therapies can get you very fixed on yourself. Okay, uh, the therapy of Christ doesn't do that. Okay, it brings you in, in freedom and depth and, and spontaneity. It's like a springboard. You're looking at Christ, and in, in doing it, you see yourself, you know. St. Catherine of Siena says, the soul that looks at herself, and the, the, soul, the soul cannot see herself in herself. She can only see herself in God. Okay? So whatever it is, when you gaze upon Christ, like, like Nathaniel today, when you gaze upon, when you begin to look at Christ, he begins, to sh he begins to radiate splendor, show you parts of your being that you can't touch without him. Do you understand? Sometimes you can't even see the wounds without him. So that's, that's be the best I can do on that, you know? And an authentic spirituality helps you to live in the world. Like our thing, Dominican spirituality, is, is making a cell for yourself in your heart. Now, I'd love to stay at home. I, I mean, I didn't want to go to World Youth Day. You know that, you know? <laughs> I mean, everyone knows that. I made no secret because I want to stay at home. I want to be myself, quiet, and you know, you know, live in a field with a million and a half uh, young people, <laughs> like without a pillow, without a mat. It's not my idea of like a, a good time, you know. <laughs> but you know, but Christ does pull us out. He does. He does draw us out of the cell. But we, we remain with him in our hearts. We remain with Christ, okay? So there's kind of different way, ways of understanding. Does that help a bit? Yeah, it, yes, okay, yeah, welcome. Great question, yeah. Anyone else? It's okay. Not gonna... There was a part earlier on one of the slides, and I'm going to see if I can remember exactly how to quote it. Mm. But it basically said, man must appropriate and assimilate yeah. the whole or the fullness of the Yeah, the whole reality of the... Uh, and, and redemption. redemption. Well, what does that mean? But how does that look? Like, it seems like such a, um, a hard concept to grasp. It's literally called the mystery of the incarnation. So what does that mean for a man to assimilate that? Um, you kind of have to wrestle with it. Uh, you have to take it very seriously. <laughs> it, it's basically formation. You have to form yourself in, in, in a Christ-centered spirituality. Even if you're a lay person in the world, um, I mean, you know, Opus Dei teach that, you know, there's a way of finding God in the world and in your work, you sanctify your day through your work, you know, which is it's a good insight, you know, but, but, uh, but also you can kind of lose yourself and Christ in the world, you know, uh, but for, for example, what are you reading at night? What are you watching when you go home? What kind of music do you listen to? Uh, are you doing courses? Are you building up your knowledge of Christian history? Are you building up your understanding of Christian psychology, whatever it is, or Christian theology or, or doctrine, you know? Are you forming yourself in, in the catechism? You know, are you, are you there 
encountering Christ in his church every day, or is it just like marginal? Is it, is it minimalist? You know, Cardinal Sarah used to say that, you know, that he said, you know, some people are just kind of Sunday Catholics. <laughs> They're just there for an hour and 45 minutes. And then you're, you're competing with Sky Television. You're, you're competing with so much and you've only got people for about 40 minutes. But there's the whole week in which the you know, people can form themselves. They can, I mean, that's not the best answer, but it's, you know, what, how, what are you learning? How are you, how are you do you want to go deeper? Do you want to do more? That, that's what I think it is, you know, and it's on the scriptures, it's in prayer, it's in formation, it's in theology, uh, it's in work, maybe you could do uh, work with the poor, work, work with, with the homeless, whatever, that will form you too, you know, yeah, is that it, yeah, that's what it means, yeah. That's why I'm putting you on YouTube, competing with Sky. What? Huh? <laughs> competing with Sky. Oh, I couldn't compete with Sky, you know, <laughs> that's it. Speaking of Father's Notal Formation, um, everyone is very welcome. We still have the book study. Um, it's Adri Street's book, Men, Women and the Mystery of Love. And it's it genuinely is a brilliant book. Um, and each chapter is individual, so it's a different topic each chapter we do. And there's questions related to the chapter. And we have fantastic discussions, like how we have right now. We have it on Zoom, it's free, it's online. It's another way of growing um, more deeper uh, in your faith, but also specifically in terms of dating relationships and just theology of the body and, you know, God's plan um, for, for marriage. So it's really a great resource. Um, so we have four more chapters, and these last four chapters are actually really good. They're very juicy. They're very good, um, really good kind of questions and discussions from them. So, yeah. Okay. Must have a taste. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's it. Yeah, this, th those kind of things. Yeah, I mean, they, they're very helpful, you know. Get, uh, do some good courses and form yourself when you have free time, you know, and, um, and listen to decent music going into work, you know, or, or say the rosary, you know. <laughs> kind of like, <laughs> whatever, you know. Is that okay? Yeah, okay. So we'll have uh, tea. Tea, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, grand.